Uh, Jeannie Robertson was still alive at that, at that time. Oh, good heavens, I yeah. she, she, died, she died in 75. And when did you first come across it again? Jeannie? Ah. 54. 54. Uh, I've read the story about the, the first encounter. So yes, it's, 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 it's that's right. It's a funny thing that Jeannie didn't exactly remember what did happen. You know, the way that, that uh, people yeah. remember what they want to remember. Yeah. I'll tell you a secret now, though I don't think possibly you might want to uh, publish this. But I wasn't wearing a Highland dress when I first saw Jeannie. I often did later on for the simple reason that I've got nothing else to wear. I mean, I was earning so little money and, have it, and getting so, um, uh, you know, uh, into the red with laundry bills and heaven knows all what, that finally, <laughs> no, 53 it was, not 54 when I discovered it. But... Um, uh, but finally, the, if I hadn't been wearing a kilt, I would have been going around stockers, you know. <laughs> That's the reason I was wearing a kilt. But it was the second year that I went to see Jeannie that I was wearing the kilt. And I do remember her looking at me, and mind you, I could wear the kilt in those days anyway. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I do remember Jeannie, and she admired me wearing the kilt. And of course, a tall man, as you know, can wear the kilt. And, um, knees, well, of course, uh, what is he? <laughs> now, anyway, um, it was actually the second time that uh, Jeannie saw me on a, you know, at the beginning when I, when I, she was in the same husi in Kaze and, and, uh, rapped at the door and there Jeannie, I can remember still, she was sort of sizing me up and my god i did look good let's face it <laughs> but it i wasn't wearing the island dress the first time that you saw me and furthermore well i mean like all these things various things have got conflated in our memory you know uh for example uh she says i was uh hamish was uh not easy to put a war nor was I, of course. But then, of course, she invited me in. What actually happened was this. I mean, to my recollection, now here's me probably doing the same genie thing, you know, yeah. but still. I'd been uh, in the castle gate of Aberdeen uh, talking to the, the salesman and uh, moving from stall to stall. And you can just imagine what would happen. People were telling me, oh, you've got to see so-and-so, you've got to see so-and-so, and all the rest of it. So, eventually, in a notebook, which I could show you, I got the name, I began to write down the names of the people that were recommended. And there was Jeannie Higgins. That was Jeannie's married name. So there, Jean or Jeannie Higgins, I would put a stick. Uh, somebody else he would be saying, oh, Will, there's Davy Stewart, and then, of course, there's Jeannie Higgins. <laughs> and I would go down there, oh, there's, there's Jimmy Hutchison, but then, of course, there's Jeannie Higgins, you see. So I would be putting an extra tick beside Jeannie. So then eventually I'd say, oh, well, uh, there's nothing for it. I've got to see this woman. She's obviously uh, mm -hmm. being recommended. So luckily I was staying in Maberley Street, very near where Jeannie was staying. I don't know if you were ever there in Maberley Street, there's this house, Maberley House, which, oh, of course, it's years ago. Oh, I'm sure the house is still there, but of course the people are all changed. It was a lady, Mrs. Rose. She was um, a permanent communist candidate for North Aberdeen, the, uh, the council, for years and I years. Know Margaret Rose. Margaret Rose. Did you know Margaret Rose? I knew her. Oh, well, uh, it was Margaret was my landlady. And um, she gave me a good deal of assistance. Mind you, she was a very um, sectarian woman. But you can't have everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's an astonishing woman, it's Margaret Rose. I mean, she stood for the council year after year as a communist candidate. She usually got about 70 votes, but not bad. Yeah. For, uh, because uh, she got them on, on her own um, personal merit. Right. And acquaintance. Anyway, Jeannie was close by. Pardon? Jeannie was close by. Jeannie was very close by Maberley, Maberley Street, and uh, Jeannie was in Cause End, you know. So, I mean, it only took me about 10 minutes to walk from one place to the other. And there, when I rapped at the door, 
she'd been doing housework and she was wearing an apron and a sort of turban on her head and I could see that she wasn't by any means pleased to get somebody else coming in. I thought she was going to say, okay, we've got one, come back next year. <laughs> so I adopted the the uh, policy which might be regarded as cruel or even sadistic. I sang to her <laughs> on the doorstep before she could close the door. Really, I sang, I sang and as it so happened by divine intervention or something, I sang a version of the Battle of Harlaw, which I'd recorded not long before from somebody else. And uh, But I was singing there on the doorstep, desperately. A slow smile spread over Jeannie's great big face, you know, and she said, come along and I'll sing you the right way. Uh, so in I came and that's how I got in. Now Jeannie, of course, um, so much happened then, you see. No wonder she began to conflate things in her memory. Because after that, in no time, she was in London. Uh, when I got back home to Maberley House, I phoned Lomax in London. But after all, uh, I thought it's up to me to, he'd given me assistance, so I thought I might as well give him assistance. Also, I'm very <coughs> proud of my discovery, naturally. So I phoned Lomax in London, and I said to him, listen, Alan, I've got today what we didn't get uh, last year. I said, I have got the greatest ballad singer in Scotland. Did you think that at the, at the uh, immediate Oh, response? immediately. What was immediate, your immediate reaction? My immediate reaction was, it was sort of Nunc Dimittis feeling, you know, okay, this can sort of flow on now. Here she is. Uh, if I die tomorrow, I, uh, my notebook will be found and somebody will come and see her. And that's it, you know. Oh, my, that, that she was the tops. I had no doubt. I mean, she hadn't sung a verse of her law, her own version. You know, she fixed her great big black eyes on me and sang me her law. And I, as I say, it was a kind of nunc dimittis feeling. I sat way back down. I don't like sitting in low, soft couches anyway. But these thoughts were far from me at that particular minute. I just sort of collapsed in this low, <laughs> soft Coach, looked up at Jeannie's black eyes and thought, oh well, well this is it, you know, what there she is, what else there she is. Oh, dozens of things, they're all down, I mean, they're yeah. listed in the, all listed down in the index there. I mean, she sang me, I mean, I stayed quite a long time. She made tea for me. And uh, I stayed quite a long time then. And uh, in fact, um, I went away, you see. I went to uh, Maberley House and said, I'll probably be pretty late. And uh, I did get tea in Maberley House from Mrs. Rose, but when I got back, Jeannie had made tea for me there, so I had two teas the same day that I discovered Jeannie. And I brought in uh, some booze from the bar down at the end of the road, and so Donald, her husband, and Isaac, her brother-in-law, and Jeannie and I, although Jeannie was never a drinker. I mean, uh, the most she would take occasionally would be a brandy or something like that. But uh, mostly she'd ask for a soft drink. Anyway, she made tea for me, so I had two teas the day I discovered Jeannie. That's absolutely <laughs> true. Let me sink or swim. <laughs> and uh, so then I stayed there for hours. Oh, my God. But then, of course, Jeannie had been claiming earlier on to be so flippant tired. She showed much more energy than I displayed. My God, I was practically gasping by the time she led me away. Let me away. I mean, the, she just, well, when she got to the pit between her teeth, she just go on singing. And I mean, I'd got the tape recorder there. The following day, I was sending SOSs down to Edinburgh for more tape. Because uh, I had no idea we would use so much tape in the one evening, you know. Um, I remember hearing the Lead Belly tapes on the last sessions that he made in, yeah. in the hotel room, and he seems to be exactly the same way. Yeah. The, the music, the songs are just bubbling out, yeah, yeah, pouring out. Oh well, Jeannie was always like that. Once she uh, and, and she was a wonderful talker, you know. It wasn't only just songs. Jeannie was a tremendous conversationalist, and um, uh, like Dr. Johnson, she talked for a victory. <laughs> Nobody challenged Jeannie when she was talking. 
I mean, I've, I've got quite a number of, uh, you know, uh, tapes down below and across, funnily enough, in that red box at the bottom of that uh, midden there. Um, these are just conversations of Jeannie. And she was a wonderful talker. She would uh, talk uh, the proverbial hind leg off. And I mean, she... Uh, and recitations too. Oh, and recitations and stories. Oh, Oh, Jeannie was an amazing woman. She was an astounding woman. I mean, if I do nothing else in life, I, I have got a niche in Scottish history. I know that. I discovered her. Nobody can take that away from me. <laughs> Alan Lomax said to me the same thing as I said what Callum McLean had said to me, you know. He said, OK, <laughs> all right, you discovered her. Now, but the point is, you see, that I'd been collecting with Lomax. And uh, he didn't discover her, I discovered her. <laughs> I discovered her partly through divine accident and partly through uh, something else. Following my nose. The castle gate. The castle gate. Was the uh, green still in Aberdeen? The green was still there. Oh, same, same. oh, good God, I, I mean, Aberdeen in those days, I mean, uh, I could tell you a whole lot of things about Aberdeen and the countryside, which are now passing out of memory. I mean, Aki Aki Bray isn't the same now as it used to be. I saw Aki Bray when it was in full, well, not exactly in full flower, you know, it was a continental Sunday up there by Old oh Deer, Aki Bray. My God, I saw seen Jim, Jimmy McGregor, Jimmy McGregor, Jimmy Macbeth in full flower there at Aki Bray. And uh, teaching a lad a, a Bothy song, stanza after stanza, in the pub in Old Deer after it. So I'm beginning to turn into a Methuselah. <laughs> a pure Methuselah. But luckily I don't look it. <laughs> oh my God, Sandy, I'm beginning to enjoy this conversation. Go on, ask, ask me some more. <laughs>